Hello, this is Team 12 presenting their mechanism analysis and synthesis. My name is Jean-Paul Garbeza. This is Javier Rojas and Juan Manuel Valencia. We start off with our slider crank, which consists of four links and four joints, some prismatic, some revolute. They're all one degree of freedom, and which turns into a one degree of mobility mechanism. It converts rotating motion to a reciprocating motion, which is a back and forth motion. We start off our analysis with a position analysis by using our vector equation which adds the links 1 and 4 and sets them equal to 2 and 3. We end up with a quadratic equation which gives us two angles, therefore two closures. These are the solutions generated from the position analysis. This graph shows the two closures of the positions of R1 versus the position of the, of the crank. This graph shows the positions of point desk, a point attached to the coupler link versus the position of the crank. As you can see, even though the crank itself moves in a circular motion, point S itself is actually very oblong. These systems are nonlinear and can result in very strange shapes depending on what sizes are used. This shows our, uh, the velocity of the slider and this shows the acceleration of the slider with respect to the crank position. Interesting thing to note here, when the velocity dips or peaks, these also correspond to the points at which the acceleration crosses the value of zero. This, of course, is, makes total sense because the derivative of the velocity acceleration at this point and this point is zero. Uh, now, uh, this is a video showing the motion of the lighter crank. As we can see, uh, here we, we make the trace of the point S on the coupler link and it matches exactly the, the graph that Javier shows. <coughs> Uh, this is the use that we came up with uh, for a slider crank. This is uh, when when the when the link number two rotates, it's gonna convert that motion to a linear motion of the saw, and the point eight is gonna open the gate on a on a two feeder, and it's gonna let uh, any object that you have on the two feeder come on the weight of the saw, and then he is gonna cut it. Uh, now this is the second part of our of our project, the four bar uh, analysis. So in a four bar, we have uh, four links. Uh, and four joints, and we have to have one fixed link that in this case is our R1. <coughs> now, uh, on this, uh, the four bar mechanism, we, had, we were asked to find uh, <coughs> the, the, the path for, uh, for the coupler link to pass through three points. So, we use these two equations that are to find uh, the center pole position of, that, of the circle where the points are going to be located. So in this case, we're going to find the, the, the center pole position of A, find the x and y coordinates, and the same for, 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 for the point B. These are the results that we get for, for the four bar mechanism. So here are the, the values of the center pole A, center pole B, and with those are very easy to find the link lengths of the four bar mechanism. Now with Gershon law, we can, we can say if it's a type 1 or type 2 mechanism. As mentioned earlier, with in Gershaw's law, we were able to calculate this device is actually a type 1 mechanism. It means it can behave like a crank rocker or a double rocker. A crank rocker will rotate one bar of the Genesis degrees while one ro a crank a, a crank, a goes back and forth. A double rocker will rock all both joints back and forth. This is a SOLIDWORKS model of the, the, the four bar we generated. As you can see, this is the shortest link, this is the longest one, this is the fixed link, and this is the coupler link. Now, as previously mentioned, this thing has uh, two closures, two possibilities, which this thing can perform a certain motion. This is closure one, closure two. The desired points are shown to be on closure one, point one appearing at zero degrees, point two appearing around six degrees, and point three appearing at 120 degrees. They all appear as well in the desired order. Well, a uh, jump pause. So our design, we chose to use it as a feeder on assembly lines. It can change packages from one height to another or from one line to another one laterally. This is the animation that consists of a circle that coincides with the graph that Javier previously mentioned that the crank must pass through.
conclusion, four bar mechanisms are very versatile by changing the link lengths and the link inputs or the fixed links. One can change what the mechanism will do. And slider cranks are very are in wide use today, such as in cars, airplanes, automobiles, and power tools. Thank you.